How many of you want to leave here today and you want to be challenged and closer to God than you've ever been before? Amen. I want to read to you from 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 2. Some of you are beginning to stand. If you'd like to stand in honor of the Word of God, that's fine. 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 2 in the New Living Translation says, For God says, at just the right time, I heard you. On the day of salvation, I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today, everybody say today. Today Today is the day of salvation. Today I want to minister to you for the next few minutes from this title. Not too late. I want to tell somebody today, and I feel the presence of God, even as I felt it. After I took two Tylenol PMs late last night to try to get some sleep with this crazy jet lag, I woke, I didn't even go to sleep. I got up 45 minutes later and could not get this off of my mind. I knew after taking that medication to try to help me sleep, and me not be able to sleep, that God had a word for this church. I was up till 4.30 this morning working on this message, and I know God's about to speak to somebody. He's already speaking to you, and He's telling somebody, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. It's not too late. I said it's not too late. Turn to your neighbor and say it's not too late for you. Now lift your hands and your voices to the Lord again. And say, God, I thank you for your word. Thank you for ministering today. Come on, somebody. Let's let the roof shake with our praise. Let the ground shake with our worship. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Somebody here today, in your mind you came to church, but you think it's too late. You came because it's the right thing to do. It's the place that if something could change, this is where it would change. But you're not convinced in your mind that it can change. And I'm telling you today from the Lord, straight to your heart, it's not too late. I've got good news to bring somebody today. It's not too late. It's not too late. I said it's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. Start saying it as I say it. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. Tell yourself, it's not too late. It's not too late. I hope I say it enough today that it's all that you can think about even as you try to go to sleep tonight. It's not too late. It's not too late to be healed. It's not too late to be saved. It's not too late to repent and be forgiven. It's not too late to go to heaven. It's not too late for your family to come back together. It's not too late for your relationships to start working out. It's not too late for your marriage. It's not too late for your children. It's not too late for your job to work out. It's not too late. I'm preaching to somebody today. It's not too late. Somebody here, you feel you've gone too far. You've done too many things wrong. You've sinned one too many times. You've messed up yet another relationship and lost yet one more job. You thought you had the addiction beat, but it came back with a vengeance. But I'm here to tell you, it's not too late. Maybe you're part of this church and have been. You've lived for God for many years. But maybe you used to have a ministry. But it's not too late to have that ministry again. You think it's dead. You think it can't live again. 
like Ezekiel looking out over the valley of dry bones. You say within yourself, can these bones live? And I'm telling you, the Lord has just shown up beside you today and is telling you, yes, they can live. And the bones are about to start reconnecting. And sinew is going to come upon the bones. And muscle is going to come upon the dead dry bones. And once that was a valley of dead bones and a dead ministry and a dead lifeless life is about to live again because with God all things are possible. If Jesus says it's alive, then it's alive. If he says there's hope, then there's hope. Maybe you used to have a strong, unwavering consecration to God, but somehow the enemy and life have taken hold of you and you found yourself in a spiritually cold, dark place. And you don't think that you could ever again pray like you used to pray and fast like you used to fast and be as dedicated as you used to be. But I've come to proclaim to somebody today, it's not too late and it's not over. Could I just go ahead and tell you right now? Your latter days are going to be greater than your former days. What you think is over is only just beginning. When you realize that God is with you, when you realize it's not too late, you're going to slip your hands up and you're going to tilt your head toward the sky and you're going to meet the face of Jesus Christ and he's going to say, come up a little bit higher. I know you thought it was over, but it's not over. It's not too late. Somebody cry it out right now. It's not too late. Tell your neighbor, it's not too late. Somebody came in tears. Somebody came up to the front earlier during a time of prayer and you thought it's too late and you were thinking we're in such trouble. You were thinking how are we ever going to get out of this mess? How are our finances ever going to work out? How is God ever going to heal our life? How is our family ever going to experience unity? When will our house ever become a home? I'm ministering to you right now and I'm telling you uh, with the enemy and with life and with people, it may not be possible, but with our God, He can do anything. What you think He can't do, uh, what you think is dead, what you think think is over is not over at all for with God all things are possible you came today thinking your life and situation is hopeless but if but that if there is any hope it could be found here but you've never if you think it's too late you've never been more wrong your situation is not hopeless. Listen carefully. Hopelessness is forgetting that help is on the way. The moment you forget that somebody cares, the moment you forget that somebody wants to help, the moment you forget that there's a God in heaven that bled and died on a cross that you might not be hopeless, that's the moment hopelessness sets in. But hopelessness is simply forgetting that help is on the way. And I'm here to tell everybody, help is on the way today. Help is here today. And it's in the form of Jesus Christ. It's in the form of His grace. It's in the form of His mercy. It's in the form of this worship service. Help is not only on the way. Help has arrived at the P.O.P. today. Help has arrived to your home today. Help has arrived in your situation today. Somebody ought to thank the Lord right now that help has arrived. Help is here. Help is not a long ways off, but help 
is here. Hallelujah. If you're still breathing, it's not too late. If everything else is wrong, check your pulse. If life is so bad that you wonder if you're even alive, you wonder if there's any hope, check your pulse. This thing is terrible. Am I even alive? Is there any hope for me? I've messed everything up. I, 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 I came to God, but then I walked away from Him. I didn't want to, but I let life and I let temptation and I let sin and I let the wrong influences get off. Am I even alive? Is there any hope for me? If you feel any kind of a pulse in your body, if you're able to take one more breath, I'm preaching to you today. It's not too late. If everything has gone wrong, it's not too late. If everything is bad, but you're still breathing, you have not gone away so far. It's not too late. Everybody check your pulse. Are you breathing? Did you drink a cup of coffee this morning? Did you grab a donut on the way to church? You may say, well, I'm here, but my shirt didn't get ironed, and I'm wearing two different color socks, and my life's a mess. If you're breathing, there's hope for you today. I'm telling you, if you were on your deathbed, there's hope for you today. If there was not one more hour to live, but you're still breathing now, God can still save you. God can still forgive you. There's still hope for you today. Somebody praise Him. I said there's still hope. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. Romans 5 and 20. I'm going to read you the King James and I'm going to read you the New Living Translation. Romans 5 and 20 says, Moreover the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Amen. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. The New Living Translation says, God's law was given so that all people could see how sinful they were. But as people sinned more and more, God's wonderful grace became more abundant. What's the Bible telling us today? It's telling us that no matter how bad the world gets, and no, sin, no matter how sinful the world may be, it will never be stronger than the grace of God to save us, to forgive us, to set our lives on the right track. So sin may be abounding, but guess what? The grace and mercy of God is abounding more, is greater. What are you saying, Brother Elms? I'm preaching to somebody. It's not too late. Sin may be abounding in your life, but God's grace is abounding much more than the sin in your life. If you'll let God do it, He'll give you His mercy. He'll give you His grace. He'll forgive you of all the sin in your life. Life, and you can start on a new path that you've never been on before. You feel sorrowful about your sinful actions of your past? It's okay to feel sorrowful. I'm telling you it's not too late. In 2 Corinthians 7 verse 10, it says, For the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. There's no regret for that kind of sorrow. But worldly sorrow, which lacks repentance, results in spiritual death. It's okay to be sorrowful over your life and the sin in your life and the bad stuff that's happened. 
the bad decisions that maybe you've made, the mess you feel like you've made. It's okay to be sorrowful over that. If you came in sorrowful today, the Bible says that godly sorrow is what that is. It's the kind of sorrow that leads us to an altar of repentance. And when we repent from our sorrow, God takes away the sorrowfulness and He replaces it with joy and he replaces it with peace and he takes the chalkboard of your life that has all the bad things and all the sins and all of the miscalculations written on it and he takes an eraser and he begins to erase the chalkboard the negative things the sin in your life and you walk away from the church you walk away from that prayer meeting forgiven and in a fresh walk with God and a fresh start. You'll feel a weight lift off of you like you've never felt before. You'll begin to understand, I have hope. It's not too late. What the preacher said was true. I've got strength today I didn't have. You'll wake up tomorrow morning and you'll feel a healing coming over your life. You'll see hope in your marriage. You'll see hope in your family. And you'll see hope in your own life. Look at somebody and say, it's not too late. The Bible teaches us about a day that is coming where everyone who is saved will be caught away to heaven to be with God for eternity. After that day, the Bible says, whoever is left will be lost. We call that catching away the rapture of the church. I have good news for those who know they aren't ready today. Somebody that came in thinking I'm not ready. Things in my life are not right. But I don't know if it's too late for me. I've got good news for you today. The rapture hasn't happened yet. And the Bible says we're living in the dispensation of grace or the time of God's grace from the day that He was crucified on an old rugged cross 2,000 years ago until this day at the end of 2019. God's grace is still sufficient. His blood is still flowing. There's still hope in repentance. And the Lord is still forgiving people of all of their sins and all of their wrongs. He said He's not willing that any should perish but that all would come to repentance. He wants everybody to make it. He wants everybody to be saved. He wants us to be saved more than we want to be saved. There's hope today. Through the Bible, we know we are living in that time of grace. No man knows when the Lord is coming. It could happen today. Things have lined up to such a place that it could happen today. It could happen tomorrow. But right now, in this service, there is still hope. There is still time. And I'm preaching to somebody. It's not too late. It's not too late to make it right. It's not too late to say I'm sorry. It's not too late to forgive. It's not too late to get your heart right with God. It's not too late to become faithful. It's not too late to start giving and sowing into God's kingdom like never before. It's not too late. How many accounts are there in the Bible where situations looked absolutely impossible? But when God stepped in, things changed. When God stepped in, the impossible happened. The Bible is full of them. Let me mention just a few. I am sure that in all of these situations, people thought at some point or another, it's hopeless, it's too late, it's over, this can't be fixed, we're about to die. But when God stepped in, Israel had their path blocked by the Red Sea. But Moses, hold out your staff. And when you do, the waters are going to part. And dry land is going to appear. And a way that was not there before is going to show up. And Israel is going to walk through to the other side. What looked impossible is now possible because God showed up. 
just because they faced a Red Sea didn't mean it was over. It wasn't too late, even though they thought it was too late. Because when God showed up, it wasn't too late. The woman and her son had run out of food and had no more meal to make any bread. And they thought to themselves, it's over. We're about to die. It's too late for us. But woman, take another look inside of that barrel. Because what you thought was over, God has just replenished to overflowing. Tell your son to go look in the oil jug again. Because what once only held a few drops of oil is now full of oil. It's not too late. Because when God shows up, he replenishes what's been lost. He replenishes what the devil says can never be replenished. And God's replenishing somebody today. Somebody came in empty, but you're going to leave full. Somebody came in without anything, but you're going to leave with everything. Because a miracle is happening, even as I preach this message right now. A miracle is happening. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not too late. Come on, crippled man of 38 years. Laying by the pool of Bethesda. He probably thought it's too late. After 38 years, I'm never going to make it into the pool to receive my healing. And when the man showed up that would eventually heal him, Jesus Christ. And when Jesus asked the man, what would you like for me to do for you today? God in flesh standing before him. 38 years of being crippled. And now the God of glory, the healer, the great physician stands in front of him. The man does not even answer the Lord's question. You would think he would say, I want to be healed of being crippled. The Lord asked him, what do you want me to do for you? You would think that would be his response. But he was so convinced, Brother Wilson, that it was over. And he was so convinced it was impossible. And he was so convinced, listen to me, that it would never happen. That he said, Lord, every time I try to make it into the pool, there is no man there to help me into the troubled water. He doesn't even answer Jesus' question. Jesus is asking, what do you want me to do for you? And the man says, every time I try to go into the pool, there's no help for me. What the man was saying, can I paraphrase today? What the man was saying is what somebody here is saying. It's too late for me. It can't happen for me. I've tried for 38 years and it's not happened yet. But the Lord saw the man and understood that he felt hopeless. And the Lord said, rise, take up your bed and walk. And the man rose up, picked up his bed. And for the first time in 38 years, he walked. Amen. I'm just here to preach to somebody. It's not too late for you. It's not too late for you. Even if it's been 38 years, even if it's been 10 or 20 years, it's not too late. Jesus is asking you today, what do you want me to do for you? Why don't you lift your hand and ask him right now? Don't make an excuse. Don't, don't make reasons why it can't. Lift your voice right now and ask the Lord. Tell the Lord what you want for him to do for you. Can everybody lift their voice right now? Can everybody just lift your voice and just say, Lord, this is what I need. Lord, this is what I want you to do for me. You're asking and I'm telling you. And I'm believing right now, Lord, that it's not too late for me. It's not too late for me. Hallelujah. The woman with the issue of blood thought it was too late after 12 long years of giving all that she had. Every doctor, 
no more money. And the thought had to have crossed her mind, it's too late for me. And I'm going to die from this disease, this problem, this issue of blood. But then she heard Jesus was coming to her town. And she said, if I could but touch the hem of his garment, I believe I could be made whole. So you know what she did? She took the last ounce of meal, the last ounce of oil, the last ounce of strength, and she fought and she crawled and she clawed her way to the robe of Jesus and touched the hem of garment of his garment with the last bit of mustard seed faith that she had. And when she did, the Bible says, virtue flowed into her body that the doctor couldn't heal, that the money couldn't heal. I'm preaching to you today. It's not too late. If you'll make up in your mind, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get to Jesus. I'm going to receive my healing. I'm going to be forgiven. It's all going to be okay if I can just touch the hem of his garment. I could keep going with those stories. But let me talk to the backslider for just a second. Somebody that's here today that's coming back to God. You've been away from God, but you're coming back to God. The prodigal son started towards home even though the thought had to have crossed his mind. It's probably too late. And what I'm doing is probably a futile practice. And when I get there, it's going to be too late for me. But it's all that I know to do. So I'm going to go back to Father's house. Maybe that's why you're here today. I'm here to tell somebody, it's never too late to come home. It's never too late to come home. It's never too late to come back to God. The Bible says the prodigal was walking home. But the father, when he saw him afar off, ran to meet his son because he was so excited that his son was coming home. Could it be that our heavenly father has just been waiting for you to come back home? It's never too late to make your heart right. It's never too late to come back home. Thank you for using the little bit of faith that you had today as the musicians make their way to the platform and prepare to start singing. It was in that cold darkness of night that the wise men saw something they had never seen before. A light in the sky. A bright star, the Bible records, in the east. We don't know the whole story. Just that the Bible says wise men came from the east and they followed the star until it came to rest over the place that Jesus was. I don't know about you, but I've never walked out in the daytime to look at the stars. Nobody goes out in the daytime to go stargazing. You go out to look at the stars, when? When? You go out to look at the stars at night because in the darkness, the stars contrast their light and you can really see them. Could it be that without the darkness, of night the wise men could have never ended up in the place where Jesus was could it be that in the daytime hours they stopped their journey because they couldn't see the star and they waited until the sun went down and waited for the star to reappear so they could continue on their journey Could it be that the darkness became their blessing? Could it be that in the darkness is where they found 
their real direction. Oh, we love it when life finds us in the sunshine. We love it, don't we, when things are going good. When things are on the up and up, we're living on cloud nine, so to speak. But could it be the darkness you're in right now is the very thing that's going to lead you straight to the God that has not given up hope on you? Could it be that the darkness is your best friend? That in the darkness, the light is beginning to shine. You're here today at P.O.P. And while the lights are on, and while it's a beautiful day outside, you are in a darkness that you've never experienced before. I'm telling you, you need to do what the wise men did. They lifted up their eyes to the night sky, and a star showed up that led them to the Messiah, to the Savior, to the Healer, to the One who would take the punishment for our sins. You need to lift your eyes today in the midst of your darkness and understand what I'm preaching to you. It's not too late. It may be late at night. It may be the dark, darkest dark you've ever experienced. But you are going to see the light that God is leading you to your hope and to your salvation. Wasn't it at night? when the angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds and they saw, the Bible says, the glory of the Lord surrounding them, it happened at night. Jesus was born. Is it any wonder that He was born at night? Let's stand. He came to a dark world, not only physically, but spiritually. Your world may be dark, but He is the star of hope. He is the star of reconciliation. He is the star of forgiveness and repentance. They're going to begin to sing here in just a moment. And I wish this congregation today would begin to flood this, this altar area and say, Lord, it may be dark in my life, but I'm coming to you. Listen. Listen. All we have is today. What if tomorrow is too late? What if tomorrow is too late? What if our life doesn't go beyond tomorrow? What if the rapture takes place tonight while we sleep? Are we ready? What if tomorrow is too late? Tomorrow may be too late, but it's not too late right now at the Pentecostals of Phoenix. It's not too late right now on this Sunday morning. So would you begin to come right now as quickly as you can? Don't let the enemy talk you out of it. Don't let life talk you out of it. Don't let lunch talk you out of it. Don't let anything talk you out of your relationship with God, of letting God do a work in your life today. Come on, everybody. Let's begin to sing. Let's begin to lift our voices. And let's begin to worship and praise God. Can you come with your hands lifted? Can you come with your voice raised? Come on, everybody. Let the Lord hear your voices. Let the Lord hear your cry right now. Let the Lord